Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the next episode in my series, Behind the Raw, where I take you behind the scenes and talk you through my editing, my workflow, and my thoughts on a particular image from a recent shoot. Now, this week, <laughs> I can't wait to share this one with you because it was an absolutely incredible trip that I had with Bernard, and we went off and exploring, and if you haven't seen the series of those great episodes, I highly encourage you to go watch them, but the one particular one was last week's when we went to a location which was world class. Now, to get there, it was a bit of an adventure. We had rough seas to get there. It's an island, but when we got there, it completely blew me away. I managed to capture some of the best shots I've taken this year, if not ever. And there's a number of shots as well that I'm going to end up printing because every time you walk past an image that you print, it brings back the thought process and the feelings that you had when you took the shot. But on this occasion, there's one image I'm going to take and it's going to be slightly different. So normally I use uh, Lightroom Classic when I'm doing my edits, but on this particular occasion, I needed to focus stack because there was a subject which was flowers in front of me with incredible stacks in the background and I wanted to make sure that I got everything in focus. So I'm going to have to bring it into Photoshop and then merge the, and blend the layers. So I'm going to talk you through my method for doing that. We're going to jump onto the computer to Lightroom Classic and to Photoshop for Behind the Raw. Let's go. Okay, so here I am now with the images that I want to edit. And as you can see by this, this is an incredibly beautiful scene. Now, when I found this composition here, I had to be very careful where I positioned my camera because I wanted to have separation all around these areas. So if I give you a look here at these beautiful stacks, I wanted to make sure that Number one, I could see the edge of this one, but also number two, this wasn't overlapping onto the main stack on the right hand side. Now, the way this image as well is framed is this is another stack that's here and then over here is the cliff. But all of these flowers here were perfectly in bloom, but I wanted to get them into the shot, but I had to get very, very low obviously to fit them into the shot. So when I was taking it, I decided that I needed to go from a focus stack point of view. So I took two images. So the first image, as you can see here, is a long exposure because I really wanted to smooth out that water. And then the other one was an image where I focused in front of me here, which is on the flowers. And that then allowed me to be able to have those sharp, to be able to join them together in post. Now, incidentally, there's one error that I can see here on this is that this one flower that's here was actually too close to the front of the camera. So I couldn't actually focus on that one because that's how close I actually was to these flowers. But nonetheless, I've managed to get all of these here in focus. Now, if you notice that because I've shot this shot here at F4, I wanted to make sure that I got all of these here and separated them from the background. When I start to look at my um, background shot, I shot that at F10. And there's another reason why I shot this at F4 as well, is because I wanted to get a fast shutter speed because it was quite windy. And with this as well, I did one that was slightly longer, but I had movement as well in these flowers. I didn't want to have that. I could have just taken this shot here. And as you can see, all the movement that's there within the flowers, I don't really want that. I want it to be tech sharp. So. First thing I will do in this is that I will select both images. And by selecting both images, any adjustments that I do are going to be on the two images so that I get a similarity and exactly the same tones as I edit the image. And that's an important one because if you don't do that, you'll end up with one image which is one color, another image which might be slightly off or slightly different color, and then it's not going to fit well when you put the two images together. So. With that in mind, I'll follow my usual process. Um, so the first thing I'll do here is I will look and say, okay, is my horizon straight? So I can take this here and I can have a look and it is slightly off. So now, yeah, I've made a 0 0.23 um, degree change. So now my horizon is straight and that has done it on both images. Next thing I'll do is I'll take a look at my general settings. And the first thing I want to look at is my histogram because that's going to tell me where is all of the data and what have I got to play with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my highlights because if I look at the histogram here, it's quite dark and it is quite dark because a lot of this subject is dark. And if I look at the other image that's here, 
you'll see then that the histogram is pretty much the same, only a slight difference, except it's probably a bit underexposed, if anything at all. Now, so if I take my long exposure image, which I'm going to look at as, as my lead image, and I'm going to increase my highlights. So by increasing my highlights, my histogram is telling me as much as I can go. And I can look at that visually on the screen, by the way, but the histogram is a very good representation to tell you whether or not you're going to be exposed right. And also, another top tip, so I see many people that are um, producing fantastic images, but their screen isn't calibrated correctly. So they may think that it is bright, but in reality, it's actually dark or vice versa. Your histogram is going to tell you what the pixels on the screen are registering at, not what your screen is illuminating for your eye to see. So always use your histogram, not only in shooting, but also when you're editing. So I can increase my highlights here. I'm gonna increase them by 0.47. Now, it's quite dark here on the left-hand side, so I can increase my shadows. Again, if I whack my shadows all the way up here, I have a lot of detail that I can take out, but I don't really like that look because it looks far too HDR. I've said this on previous episodes of this before, but what it does do is it gives me all of that data that's there. So I can whack up the shadows and then I can bring back down the black. So it kind of removes that, but for now, I'm not going to bring my shadows all the way up. I'm gonna bring them up around about 68 and then I'm just going to bring my blacks back up again slightly. And then whites. Not much really for me to play at here. As you see, I've got this area on the top right, on the very top of the screen, which is highlighted. That's the brightest part of the image. Now I'm fine with that because, you know, it's not going to be a major factor on the image and I probably will end up cropping anyway across the top here. But nonetheless, I'm going to just for now, bring this slightly down because what I do want to do is I want to look at my overall exposure on the image. So if I increase my exposure on the image, it moves my histogram but I'm also getting it whiter and brighter, but I'm not losing anything in the highlights. And then the final thing for me is looking at this is I want to have a look at my vibrance because I really loved the colors that were here. This is a real dark blue in the water. So I want to bring that out in the image. And again, you're shooting in raw, so it's going to be a flat image, but you'll see a representation of the colors that are there anyway. So I'm going to increase my vibrance and I'm going to give it probably around about a 43 vibrance. I like this. This is quite nice. And also what it does is it brings out the punch in the yellow. I'll look and see, do I need any dehaze? And if I again, you know, bring it up here, start to bring out some of the detail that I have here in the sky. And I wanna try and keep that as well because right now it's looking quite bright, let's just say. So if I take this here and I bring this dehaze up, you can see that now my colors are becoming more rich. My, my blacks are going blacker, so I need to look at that, but I am getting detail back within the sky. Now, I'm going to take my blacks, I'm going to bring those up, so the visual representation that you see on the screen here is where it's blacker than black, so I'm going to bring those up there. And then moreover, when I start to look at this on the exposure, actually I'm gonna check one thing, if I bring my highlights all the way down, you see the detail that I have in the sky here? So I want the highlights across the overall image, so I'm going to affect that, um, by using a linear gradient. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go into my brush tools and my gradients, I'm gonna take a linear gradient. I'm gonna hold down my shift key as I drag this down here. And I want this to be quite soft, so I'm gonna drag it quite a large amount. And then holding down shift, I'm gonna bring this down and I'm going to take it to my horizon. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce my highlights. And as you can see now, all that's doing is affecting the overall aspect of the top part of the sky. Now, as I said, this is my reference image. Now, if I have a look at what I've, all, everything I've done here, by the way, has been done on the foreground image as well. So if I now look at this image here, you should see that it's exactly the same coloring. There is not much difference. And now it's gonna be a lot easier for us to blend when I bring this into Photoshop. So that would be typically my standard edit for that. But now buckle up because we're gonna take another journey into Photoshop and I'll talk you through my method. And there's many methods and that's one of the reasons I'm not a fan overly of Photoshop because it's too many buttons to do the same thing. But I have my methods that I like to do it with and I'm gonna bring this image over into Photoshop and I'll talk you through how I'm going to do that now. So first thing is the board images are selected. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna say edit and I'm gonna open as layers in Photoshop. So that's going to open in Photoshop and I'll check back in when it does. Okay, so board images are in now and one thing important to do as well when you're ever blending images are is make sure you've got the naming syntax right. So I would have named these images BTR behind the raw. 
This is my background image and then the one that's underneath that is my foreground image. But as you can see, all of this is sharp here and this is soft in the background. And then on the background image, all of this is sharp, but this is soft. So all effectively I need to do is make sure that both of these images are lined up exactly. And even if I take this on and off, you can see that there is a slight movement and that's because of focus breathing. So um, I could have uh, avoided that if I went into completely manual, but I wanted to make sure I got it right, I went into uh, automatic focus. So first thing you do is you select all, so control A or hold down shift and hit the button, uh, the image underneath. And then if you go up to edit, and you can see auto align layers. And what that will do is it'll have a look and say, okay, what do you want me to do with these? Do you want me to align them specifically or do you want me to do cylindrical or spherical or perspective? For me, I'm gonna put it into auto. It works always perfectly fine for me. So I'll click on that and now that's going to analyze it and it's gonna say, okay, I found all the areas and I'm going to line them up exactly for you. So if you look here, if I turn one and turn it off, you see they're actually exactly the same position. So what it also does is if you look here on the outside, I get a bit of a, uh, a border. I'll deal with that when it comes to the final edit. That's about the focus breathing, as you said, as I said a moment ago. So that's the first thing that I can do. The second thing, and sometimes it can work, and I'll check if it's gonna work right now, a very simple way, go into auto blend layers. So if you go into auto blend layer, it'll stack the images. Again, I always keep seamless tones and colors ticked, content aware, transparent areas as well. Uh, keep that ticked and then I'm going to press OK. That now is going to blend both the images together and we see here what it comes back with is it takes all of the items here that are sharp and it takes these that are sharp but what it doesn't do is it doesn't blend the background in perfectly as well. Now you can go in and you can modify the individual mask that it's created but for me, I don't want to do that. Uh, I want to show you how I can do it uh, manually. So I'm going to take off these here. So give me a moment and I will uh, undo. Okay, now we're back to both images. They have been aligned. So what I can do is if I turn off my background layer and I only look at this foreground layer, let's see if this will work. I can go in now with this um, object selection tool and I can say, okay, on this image, I want to try and pick out the front here only. And if I just drag this across here, let's see if it'll do it that way for us. I'm gonna try a number of different methods. So this is the way that it has done this, okay? It does seem to have gotten everything, but if I zoom in here, it's missing this flower. So it's not getting that in the image for me. So I don't want to do that. A very simple and effective way to be able to do it is go into your first layer and add a layer mask. Now there's my layer mask here. So what that effectively is doing is it's creating a mask that you can now erase and paint through. So the top layer is my background. So I want to be able to paint in with a brush here and I want to have a large brush. I want to have 100% you know, flow and smoothing it doesn't necessarily be mattering because I want to make sure I'm getting the information on the front here and selecting my brush collecting on my, on my layer here. And if I just brush now, you see that I'm brushing in all of these flowers underneath, which are now becoming miraculously sharp. You can make that bigger by using your uh, right bracket. And now I can just bring all of these in here. And as you notice here, all I'm doing is just brushing over and bringing all of these in focus in the front of the image. Very simple, very straightforward. Now, when I look at this image, I see a couple of challenges. Uh, number one, on this side over here, I didn't get that exactly in focus. That's fine. I mean, it's a, ideally you'd like to have it focused, but I do like that with the image as well as worked out overall. This is the main star of the show. This is the supporting actor, so it's not necessarily a deal breaker for me. And if I zoom in here on this, you can see that I can be very precise and allowing these to be now in focus, but I can also make my brush smaller and I can take this one and make him in focus as well, which is what was missing a moment ago from the auto that Photoshop had tried to do. And I can continue to come around the edges here, just individual clicks. An important thing as well I remember to, to share you, with you is don't hold down your mouse and keep going, keep going, keep going, because if you make a mistake you can, and you undo that, it's gonna do all the work that you've done. So take individual clicks for each time you want to use your brush to be able to paint in uh, to the image. So looking at this file here now, I think I am pretty much done. But what I want to do, what I do like is that all of these are purely in focus. 
make the brush a bit bigger now again just to get this whole area a final brush through and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to remove that offending one right here uh, after I get all of these done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control and S which is going to save the image. That's going to save this as one file back into Lightroom. And when we go back into Lightroom, then I'll show you how I'm going to remove this offending item here. So now this has taken the image back into Lightroom. And as you can see, everything is sharp. And all I need to do now is come in here to my heel and take out this. So I can just select this and it's going to find a corresponding area and take it out. And there it is gone. So uh, final thing I want to do on this is I want to look at my crop because I think I'd like to have this as a 16.9 uh, and also I want to get rid of this haloing on the right hand side here. Actually if I come back out of this for a, short, for a moment just to show you what I was talking about here. Um, on the corners because of the focus breeding you're going to get this like framing because it's taking the background of one um, and then trying to bring it into the other so that's going to be soft so you need to make sure that you're cropping that out. So from my point of view, I want to change this here to a 16.9 anyway, as I would have said. And I'm just going to bring this in here slightly. That gets rid of that side. And I'm going to bring it in here, gets rid of that side. And there we go. I think from an image point of view, that works quite well. Now, I don't actually, maybe I'll go back to the original crop because I do think it's quite squeezed now that I look at it here. So I'm just going to go back um, to original. And then I'm going to bring these sides back in again here, just to get rid of that framing. By the way, that framing goes all the way around, not just on the sides. So it's also down here and it's also on the top. Just give yourself enough room when you're coming back in around that. So that's that image. I think it actually works better. All the angles are working more. There's more breathing room as well. And I've got more detail in that sky. When you bring an image back in as well, if you notice here, it resets everything. So I now have more that I can play with. So I can take up these blacks here uh, in the cliffs and I can make this image as well if I wanted to a slight little bit brighter and get the most that I can out of the image here. And what I do think is I'm going to bring the highlights in the sky back down a bit further just to get that detail. And yeah, that is my image. Finally, uh, going in here, I can no longer do my denoise because it can only work on the original uh, DNG. So that's something I'm supposed to do too before you bring the image into uh, Photoshop if you do need to uh, put some AI noise removal on it, but on this one, I didn't need to do that. So yeah, I'm going to go into F for full screen. In fact, I'm going to go to fit first and foremost, and I'm going to go F for full screen. And I really like that image. Everything now that I want to be sharp is sharp. I do have, as I said, the small the slight issue over on the left hand side, but I'm not overly worried about that. What I wanted to make sure of is that when the composition was being done, I had separation in all of these items here. I have the detail in the sky and I also got these flowers in the front. So thank you very much as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed this slightly longer than normal episode, but it's an interesting one for me. I try, tried to do a couple of different options and um, methods of using Photoshop. That's personally why I use Lightroom more because I think there's so many different ways all the people will be looking in the comments going, Darren, you could have done this easier or why didn't you choose this method? Do that, I'd love to know in the comments below, but there's no right or wrong way. This is what I work with and something you might do can work for you as well also. So thank you very much as always for watching. Be sure to join me next Sunday for the concluding part of that amazing trip that I had with Bernard. And we still were at this epic location. This was sunset and now we had sunrise to come. So I really hope that you can join me for that. It is absolutely epic. Thanks as always. Please hit the subscribe button. Give me a like, give me a comment. And until the next time, schlong the fall.